Southeast Missouri. They got a rebound. They rebounded very well last night. They need to carry that over into tonight against a very good rebounding team in their win last night. And force turnovers. Tennessee State's going to play a little helter skelter at times. So make them pay for it. Make them turn the ball over. For Tennessee State, don't play any different than you played so far this season. They're very loose. You can see the fluidity in their offense right now. They'd like to go up and down the floor. And again, Junior Clay's what make it happen. Don't realize so much that you're in a tournament game. Just go out and let it all hang out. Let's see how it ends. Bob, the Tennessee Highway Safety Office brings you those keys to the game. If you put away some drinks, put away your keys. And fans don't let fans drive drunk. Zion Griffin gets it started inside for Tennessee State. Now the inside is going to be really key. We're going to talk about a couple of elements with that. When it relates right there to that guy, Branson, just trying to penetrate and make it happen for Simo. But the inside game, I think, tonight, coupled with his two guards, is going to make kind of that rounded experience in terms of watching this game that you're going to really enjoy if you're a fan. It is a four-guard, one big look with Nate Johnson in the starting lineup for Southeast Missouri State as Branson got it turned away and re-racks it with Johnson down there holding down the post. That block was by McCoy for Tennessee State. He's going to play a big part in that inside we talked about. Juan Smart went hot window and rebounded by Junior Clay for Tennessee State. Now this is the group for Penny Collins around Junior Clay. Marcus Fitzgerald, always a, a threat to go off. Dedrick Boyd, great outside shooter, and Clay hits for three. Now, even Smart trying to close out with that bad ankle from last night. Couldn't get to Clay in time. The release is outstanding. The rotation of the ball, just the fundamentals by Junior Clay, outstanding to start. And Bobby B, by the way, those uh, starting lineups brought to you by the Kentucky State Police. The Kentucky State Police are hiring. So go to joinksp.com for more info. And a range hit is through for Aquan Smart. And notice Branson giving that shot up. Back out to the outside. Three-point attempt, good. I mentioned the, the heat between Tennessee State and Southeast Missouri State regular season. Home team won both games, and both were big margins. It was a 17-seat point SEMO win, 20 points for Dedrick Boyd in Tennessee State. Again, McCoy inside, matching up against Nate Johnson. We talked about that guard play, but that battle inside bears watching tonight, too. Yeah, that's McCoy out setting the screen, called for the foul. Trying to free his guy up, Junior Clay. And Clay does enough creation on his own. You don't need to if you're McCoy to come out and kind of push and create that screen. No, it was actually on Clay handling the ball. So my mistake. Give Clay his first. It's a big surprise, actually. I haven't seen that call on him much this season. Oh, Boyd fell down, and Harris hits on the help. So I switched up right. I had Harris as the player to watch last night and not Russell. Got to flip it tonight with Russell, but we're all keeping score, Bob. Yeah, we are. I know. I, you've got me in that mode already to make sure that I'm checking myself. <laughs> it's defense. Look how far out they're pushing Tennessee State. Don't wreck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> this is a foul. They're getting out into transition, and that is definitely on Marcus Fitzgerald. He was the only guy there. And that's number two on Fitzgerald. So he gets two early ones. The guy that gives Penny Collins 14 points a night out before the first time out. Fitzgerald comes from a great athletic family in the Nashville area. Harris off the driving kick, and Smart took steps with it. Did you want to continue on that? Family well, tree for yeah. Fitzgerald? Yeah, his father's a football coach in the metro Nashville area and there's just hard to believe the kind of athletes that's, that's come out of that family have been so successful and Clay skips it Justin Williams off the bench for Tennessee State into McCoy and can't get the hook again watch they'll continue to get opportunities like that and I like McCoy's defense nice pass for Branson and Johnson slams it home Got the best of him that time. McCoy got caught high near the free throw line. 
A little stronger shooting start for Simo than it was last night when they came out ice cold to begin, but then recovered. Yeah, you gotta like that. And you just gotta like their effort for Simo down the stretch last night. And you saw those percentages just inch up. They were also taking better shots. Here you go. Junior Clay dispossesses Harris and scores two. Harris got a worse of that. He's just now getting up for midcourt. And for Simo last night, they led by four at halftime, playing a first-round game against Lindenwood. Raced away, won by 19. Harris at three, halfway down and out. Rebound, Boyd. And don't be mistaken or fooled by Clay just fully totally breathing the ball up the floor. When Tennessee State has the opportunity, that wasn't one. They'll Simo will look to push. Smart. The numbers back with Clay. And Branson a three. And Tennessee State, their first game in this tournament. Offensively, they can beat you from two. They can beat you from three. They're, they're top four in the conference, inside and outside, scoring the ball as far as their efficiency. And they go into Griffin, who gets doubled. And that ball is coming our way. Oh, Dave, come on. Statman Dave Kaplan just stole our glory. No spillage. Take a look at this pass right here. Inside. There's no telling what we're going to see here the, the rest of the way. And Frank Corn was just, he, again, relief and excitement at the same time, kind of mimic what we saw from Brian Barone when we had uh, Brad on at post game last night. And he's glad to get that first one in the tournament out of the way. Well, they had a shot at the title uh, midway through the season as Philip Russell straight to the rim on the finger roll. And that is uh, the top guy for Brad Corn and Simo. 18 points a night. We had stretch of the game last night where he took over. And here's Clay. And Justin Williams uh, came off the bench with Marcus Fitzgerald on the lead guards for Tennessee State. Already two fouls. And there's Queth. Gives it up. Clay. In and out. And it's an offensive rebound for David Acosta. And Clay always moving, but Branson ready for him. He was going to go right to the basket there that just lost the handle on the ball and turned it over. Russell steps in and drills it. You got the balance looking tonight. Russell and Harris, they're just taking turns, right? That's Russell on the big, long launch. And it's smart that it gets Clay. And Russell gets blown by. And that's a foul. Justin Williams going to the free throw line. That's a tough foul, though, early. And we'll go to the other end. We'll look at this guard play. We talked about it earlier in the broadcast, but take a look at this. Didn't close out in time to Tennessee State. Russell drains the three. You get beat on that drive that ended up pinging a foul, not on Russell, but on Josh Early, his big. Had to come over on help. Yeah, Tennessee State in that case with a, some ball reversal and decided to just throw it in that low post. And it looked like Early got a lot of basketball. Your first critique of the night. I'll take it and we'll make it happen. <laughs> make what happen? We, we want the world to hear me better. That's <laughs> so you're throwing out critiques with the calls? No, I thought you were. <laughs> Here's Russell with the left. No. And Acosta tapped it out. And Christian Brown away with it. Oh, Williams set the ball in his hands a lot, but Harris gets it out of his hands. Got quickly, Tennessee State gets back. Off of the jab, Harris gets down the lane. Harris trades a three earlier. Brad Corn looking for the charge inside. Harris has been a tank late in the season. Going into last night's first round game, he had scored 20 plus points in three straight games. And Williams, a good beginning to this game for the sophomore from Los Angeles. He's come off the bench and delivered. For the moment at this timeout, Clay's not in the game, so he's kind of wondering where some scoring would come from for Tennessee State. It's been Williams with the ball in his hands a lot, hasn't it? It has been. And Acosta's the one you want to keep an eye on. He's got the ball right now, the big guy. 
And you got Fitzgerald back into the game, too. Playing with those fouls. Goes right in, and Acosta can't finish it. And that is with Tennessee State down in the baseline. Acosta with the uh, size and Fitzgerald back in. They feel comfortable with that. And now they're going to bring Williams out and bring Clay back in. Already two teams having to delay the inbounds right here to go ahead and separate and talk to them. Well, pretty simple inbound. Just lob it up to Acosta. And bodies banging in there, and that's a foul on Tennessee State. Just to show you, Junior Clay's going to mix it up inside. Clay's the one that went to the floor. Okay, so that was a foul on Branson. Everybody was walking down the other way. Fitzgerald was right there. That was a nervy spot for Tennessee State to be in. Hardy with two fouls. Yeah, I was going to say a possible number three in that. Adam Larson will check in for Branson. And with Acosta going out for Tennessee State. And Clay back in. Top score, 19 a game. The best player at almost everything for the Tigers. Yeah, is there a better screener than McCoy right now? Twice. He's just checked a player. And that allowed you to play the drive with the right hand. I'll answer your question with the question. Is there any better driver on Tennessee State than Clay? I've done better maybe in the conference. Yeah. He can burn you from outside, too. Here's Harris bullying in on Clay, and help swallows that up. And that's Tennessee State ball. Well, wide margins, regular season, tight margin. Postseason almost went nose to nose in Nashville in the second regular season game. Part of the 11 technical fest. I'm just waiting for them to check each other, get to guard each other. Stay tuned. And it's Barnes on Clay here. And three for Brown. Air ball. Rebound Russell. Not necessarily a shot you want to see if you're Benny Collins. Well, here's Russell getting past Clay. And can't get a shot off, though. Larson three. Now Russell, the first to the ball, right back to the rim. But he travels. Oh, he travels. So James Hicks comes in and waves it off. And the SEMO band quit playing because they were arguing with the call. It's hard not to reward a hustle play like this. But watch Russell. Did he have possession? Yeah. Extra step. The, the Tennessee State fan in the front row was calling the travel. She was all over it. And there's Griffin. Driving kick. Brown three. Can't book it. Rebound Barnes. We're going to continue shooting threes. Particularly with this lineup Tennessee State has on the floor. Got and your matchup got, there, yeah. Got that matchup, and Russell wins it down to early on the pass. Sorry, I went quick enough there. Yeah, we got that Russell play matchup we were looking for. Well, that is something we're going to spotlight all night long when it happens. There's obviously an, an ability matchup that's an intriguing, but also the emotions of what happened in February. Yeah, these two, this could be their last game for one of them. Yeah, this season, that is. Correct. Well, for Clay, he's, he's a graduate. Yeah, he's, he's at five years. Russell will be back for a while, though. Actually, Clay graduated with my son at Tennessee Tech this past May. Similar basketball ability? No, not at all. What's more your son's along, name? More along the lines of, uh, of physics and engineering and not basketball. So Bob Belvin Jr. and Junior Clay cannot match up. Well, that would be Hunter. <laughs> not at all. And a hook shot goes down for McCoy. Nor can I with McCoy. And McCoy's been one of those players that's just really surging and emerging along with David Acosta. We saw glimpses of Acosta 44 earlier in for Tennessee State. And those are two players I think are kind of underrated. When you look at the Tennessee State scoring, oh, really at the bottom. Now another element from outside added to the Timo attack. And Clay races in and scores. 
you know, I can break that down all you want, but that's just pure athleticism, Connor. That's beating your opponent off the dribble and to some degree not getting help defense, but Clay is just so fast. You're absolutely right. Branson, three. And again, as I mentioned last night, to get the offense out of Branson, you know you're going to get good defense from him. So clearly the offense is a plus. Clay hides and scores. You got one of those nice, you're looking at Clay. Upper 20s near 30 at this pace. He's just that type. And his classic, Connor, he feels it. You know, Russell can't respond. Already 12 points for Clay feeling good. Yeah, I'm just a little, little surprised. I've seen mostly this season that's good 50 50 ball that Sebo gets. There's a four on two. Russell, shot fake, and finishes. That's well execution. That's well mechanics and good teaching right there in terms of being able to execute that. But I'm a little surprised. Sometimes this season you see spurts where Clay does not bring the ball to the floor and give him a little energy here. Now they're going to try and hedge high, bring McCoy, try and screen for him at the ball. Barnes doing everything he can, help from early. And the three won't sit. McCoy rebounds. Did that go off his head? Yes, it did. It did. It did go off his head. That's a lot of altitude there. We talk about McCoy. Watch along the baseline. Right there. There. Branson and then off the back of McCoy's head. I love it when the officials reenact it too. John St. Clair, the official who called it, he he started tapping his head to say, yeah, that that, that got him on the head. We've seen that McCoy's a, head. Yeah, we've seen that in the players this season, which has kind of gotten technical fouls too, so it's ironic to see the official use that as an indication. He's not gonna tee himself up. And Simo does not go slow a lot. Russell left alone. Oh, don't get away with that very much defensively no. if you're Tennessee State. No, Acosta hedge high defensively and then drop back in the lane. And Russell was kind of surprised he had a wide open shot and a rare miss on the wide open shot by Russell. Clay probing, hands in there for Evan Ursher. And Johnson slams it down. He's got two of those tonight. Head bobbing, feet stomping, playing above the rim with a timeout for Tennessee State. 14 to 2 points off turnover advantage over Tennessee State. They were not doing that last night in their win, so a much better start all the way around for that guy's club. You know, Brad Korn, you saw his young, bright assistant, Connor Wheeler, uh, mentoring Evan Ursher back onto the floor there. Had a lot of brain power, a lot of youthful energy. Ursher, a freshman. Wheeler, the first-year assistant for Simo, is Acosta out of the timeout with a two-handed jam. A pretty good high percentage shot there for a 44. Been a little surprised he hasn't played more to this point. Now look at this 2-3. Now they're going to switch back out of it and go man. And well, Tennessee State defensively, they're just going to try and create opportunities for Russell. Russell always going to his right, so that's something that's probably noted in your scout notes. When he's been successful, he's gone to the right off the ball screen high. You know, Brad Korn said a couple years out of Russell after he started his year at St. Louis. Piece to build around. With the longtime player Harris in Cape Girardeau. Nine in the clock, Dylan Branson. Gives it up for Harris. Pull up, pop. And it wouldn't sit down. Rebound for Justin Williams. Now Junior Clay is not on the floor right now for Tennessee State. Now always notable. Griffin to Acosta. Two right at the rim for him. And that's a great point because I don't often follow players that closely. Uh, you'll notice when Clay's not on the floor, but look how their defense kind of, offense rather, kind of transformed to it. They've gotten back to back. Short range shots from Acosta. Have the dunk, now the layup. Trying to track Russell though, into Acosta. And that's over the backboard out of bounds. And the Russell's wondering where the foul was. And James Six says no serve. Circus shot that never touched the backboard. It went behind the backboard through the support.
And Fitzgerald allowed to play through some foul trouble is done a good job not picking up that third foul and Penny Collins trusting him after he got two three minutes into the game now they'll reverse the floor and try and find Acosta back underneath oh boy nice is blocked Chris Harris well done yeah, it was well done good productivity from your guard I thought when they were going to reverse the ball uh, this is going to be all leather right here take a look at this block by Russell nice play Boyd breaks free dare I say he's another one that's been kind of emerging but he just went crazy a couple weeks ago did Boyd hit six in a row on three pointers when he was inserted in the game and Simo can't stop the 7-0 run Boyd after hitting from outside goes right to the basket and it is a nine zip run to force the Simo timeout Really ironic to change in lineups for Tennessee State. It's taking out the thorn of my side since I've been here coaching at DSU. I'm so excited to have Junior Clay on my side. Clay has responded this season in his graduate year. So you got the two lead players in the conference on the floor at the same time, and it's Barnes snapping the run. And we didn't see this out of Barnes last night, so you know, mark this down as one of the new items we're going to have to address tonight. And Barnes has been very effective again on the drive. They had just four points last night in the opening round win against Lindenwood. Williams cradling the ball, and it fell off the rim and down to Simo. Missed it, that was Clay giving up a shot, top of the key, giving it back to Williams and trying to create the give and go. And Simo feels kind of vindicated by that because cradling is an understatement. Was that Penny Collins was talking to Williams? It kind of gestured something about his feet. Was that play off of two feet? Very much so. And smart fighting through the contacts. Uh, Williams uh, got to be careful. You know, called for the foul. You know, oftentimes you see that you go right in and attack the guy that made a mistake at the other end of the floor and try and see if he's going to play defense against you. And in that case, the answer was yes. And a new shot clock for Simo. There's a lot of battling going on underneath. Yeah, it was a crowded pain on that out of bounds set. Smart gets it back. Well, Harrison Branson both right there. And an offensive foul. It was a hook by Harris. James Hicks had the call. Take a look at the left arm right here as he tries to advance it past Boyd, who draws the foul. And don't kid yourself, now. Penny Collins did that a time or two in college too. Huh. Huh. <laughs> look at this, just bumping. And it's well, that's not sustainable. Early. Yeah. Now, this is going to be as physical as we perhaps we anticipated it would be. Uh, early goes reverse side and it falls. Good job. Early got the defender to come back across the lane and he reversed it. That's good fundamental basketball right there to get that shot off for early. All tight dribbling. Everybody paying attention to Clay. No finish for Griffin though. And what you want to watch at both ends of the floor right now is. Not only the screens, you just see a lot of one-on-one -on -one right here, and they're going to have to tighten this game up in terms of officiating. And what do you want to watch? So much so the ball screens, but the defensive player trying to fight his way through the ball screens. And uh, where he's every indication we've seen. And that guy number four is going to have a lot to say about it. And junior Clay in Tennessee State, they went up 15 points in that first game. But then ended up losing it by 17. And big swing. Oh, wow, about a timeout in Barnes. Chalk up a win for Brad Korn on that draw. Yeah, you love that drawing up on the whiteboard during the break. On the rare time, Tennessee State has just really looked bad. Out of a dead ball. Look at the middle of the floor. There's no white jerseys there. They're opening it up for the dribble penetration. And they make another turnover. Smart. Lost the dribble, out of bounds to the Tigers. I think he said a bad word. 
Might have. Take a look at this setup right here. You screen, Branson will roll out, bring the defender with him. Fitzgerald late, playing with two fouls. McCoy bodying on early. And no shot, no shot. And that's on early number two on Josh Early, the top active rebounder for Southeast Missouri State. And the contact came early. And <laughs> he waited for that, waited for that whistle. There's a lot of banging going on. I think they're going to bring in a cost in. And he's going to back. So you go Simon with foul trouble. Size in for Tennessee State. And again, no one in the middle of the floor creates for this guy. All oh, blocked. Barnes, good get. Stays alive, though. Williams off of a shot pick. There's almost a hesitation on the part of Williams there. To, uh, waiting for that defender to come along the baseline and challenge him. Didn't happen, made the shot. Harris with that throwback three. Hit two from that spot on the floor right in front of the TSU bench. So again, I'll, I'll let you take a look. Not a lot of white jerseys in the middle. Boyd can't answer back. This is where Simo's thrived at times this year. In transition, and Boyd away with it. And back to that Harris three, Bob. You don't see a lot of guys jump forward on their three-point shot like Harris does anymore. Looking for contact, trying to draw a foul and. Position with that. I'm very surprised as I watch as the TSU is not wanting to run the floor a lot more. They're very content when they do get that defensive rebound and go right into their half court. And they're athletic enough they can run with anyone in this conference. Simo, you're saying, for Tennessee State. Tennessee State. Tennessee State. Smart. And Acosta just pinned a foul. Uh, Nate Johnson with a strong box out. Give, the, give Johnson a tackle that one. <laughs> 14, first, I don't know where he put a 6'9", 250 guy in a football field, though. I think you could probably put him at defensive end. And Bob Matukowicz could find a spot for him at CMO. I promise you that. Great. He's got great feet. Think about Johnson, you know, he had those two dumps earlier. Moves his feet really well. He's very effective. Probably got to put, I don't know, 50 pounds on him. Play left tackle or something. He and, I'm watching he and Acosta kind of talk it up, and that's been as cheerful as you've seen. Yeah, I think 50 pounds would get it there and uh, might make you all conference if you're that big. Look at this change in defense and watch a ball screen high by Acosta. Clay give up. And Acosta stagnant for now. Let's see if he comes up. He wanted a reversal. Williams goes opposite of him. And Acosta can't follow it up. Williams back in his hands, and that is thumped out of bounds. So when they finally reverse it, they get to the other side, and here's the block. Uh, Branson got the foul called against Brown. And Johnson was lobbying for that. On the shot block just a moment ago. To keep Brown in, take Fitzgerald back out. Now this is a bigger lineup by a small degree for Tennessee State. And Tennessee State struggling from the floor right now. They've only made one of their last nine shots after that 9 0 run. Simo looking for distance before halftime. Up four. And ten on the timer. Harris spins. Got rid of Clay. And Branson with three attack for Simo. Well, oh, two guys went down. So five on three. And Tennessee State will have to defend a third time with elbows flying. And that's an offensive foul. Well, Branson gets called for the elbow. In all candor, there's so much going on at possession. A little bit. You, you talked about game length. This was a two-hour, 33-minute game in Nashville in February. Tennessee State and SEMO. Yeah, and clearly as a result of assessing the technicals, sorting out the free throws that are a part of that. But 
we as the basketball community at the collegiate ranks need to be really careful about the lengthening of these games. And the shot clock is still turned on here. Eight seconds in the half. Clay reverse. No, Harris. And Simo won't get a chance to get another one up. Clay back to the rim. That doesn't stick. That's a long scoring drought for Junior Clay in Tennessee State. And Junior Clay against Philip Russell. And Simo shot it around 50% in that first half. Answered back by that shooting number for Tennessee State. Yeah, look at that rebounding number. We talked about it in the open. How well last night will not the case here tonight in the first half so you know, my thought right there is you give junior clay seven more chances because you're out rebounded mm -hmm. that might offset with some high percentage shots we saw two dunks in the first half and starts here early in the second with one I'm sure did those first half stats by digital scoreboards a proud supporter of bc digital scoreboards for and outdoor displays after the Johnson dunk, Russell's rim, and he got fouled. Yeah, that's a good drive, and nothing uncommon in the first half. And again, I'm a little surprised. Simo wants to run and made the most of this points on turnovers that we just saw in that package. But Tennessee State, not so much. And I just genuinely feel coming into it, that's a surprising statistic. And they're going to have to force the offense a little bit. Great start here, albeit very early for Simo. Mm, miss for Russell. And Penny Collins, Tennessee State head coach. Win tonight would mean Tennessee State would have their most wins overall in his five years as the head coach. Right now tied with that 2019-2020 team with 18 wins. So this is the a building marker for him as a head coach and also to get to the semifinals for the first time in a decade. And I really like the way this team is constructed. They've just been the typical up and down. And another pickpocket from behind on Clay. You know, smart that reached in behind. We've seen that a couple of times. Him and... Uh, Evan Ursher have got a couple of those tapped from behinds tonight. Yeah, Ursher not showing up at the score, but really contributing defensively. Russell got that Turner cor corner turned. Tur corned. They'll be back to that. Clay gave it up. McCoy <laughs> met at the top. Johnson raises his hand. I think we know it was on you, big fella. That was recorded at the scores table where the official could get over recorded, but that's okay. Not for the faint of heart inside, Connor. Look at like this. A little surprised again, Clay. Maybe he takes that shot in January or something, but what he does is he creates an opportunity for his teammate. And again, I remain impressed with McCoy and his emergence here late in the season. And nine points, five and a half rebounds. Is a 55% free throw shooter. The Dedrick Boyd. And gets it back for Tennessee State as a jump ball staying with the Tigers. I don't know if every shooter scraps quite as much as Boyd does. You know, they maybe clear out to the corner, hit their shots. It's a guy that's hit eight threes in the game this year. Still gives him hustle plays like that. Such a streaky shooter, though, Boyd is. And that's uh, kind of been his M.O. And overall second in the conference and three-point percentage behind Trevor Lakes of U.S. High. And that's short from Fitzgerald. Harris steps in. I see if Clay, if he gets that screen high and they create for him, if he just goes ahead and drives Ooh, instead of boy. passing it off. But when you got that, we just Boyd on cue, right? We talked about him being a streaky shooter, and here he comes. More than just a three-point knockdown guy. Patrick Boyd from Tennessee. Spent part of his career at Illinois State. And here's Junior Clay. And lost it way up. And rebound for Simo. And shoveled ahead for Branson. Got a two-on-two -two here. 
Smart into Johnson, filling the lane, and that won't count. That was a collision there. You got Johnson and McCoy. Get set. This is a football S collision. Watch a ball reversal across the floor. And McCoy not going to allow Johnson to dunk that on him. Really pushed him off measure and some free throws. And he's brought, brought some positive emotion tonight. Nate Johnson, that big dunk that forced a timeout for Tennessee State first half. He went yelling into the SEMO huddle, getting this guy's going. You immediately see the change. Now Acosta in for McCoy. Looks like Tennessee State schematically is a little concerned about Johnson being able to roam free more in the middle than they would like him to. They're going to let Acosta come in and bang him for a while. And Johnson, 6'9", Acosta gives him plus two inches at 6'11". <laughs> that screen got you excited. I'm sorry. You can see that coming, and there's another collision. I mean, you folks. Good? Yeah. Are you okay? I, I'm just glad I'm on this side. Take a look at this screen, and I'll let you make the call right here. I, I'm wondering if you're okay. Yeah, is is Russell call. okay? Yeah. And are you okay? And Russell's Russell's got to play the rest of the game. I can play hurt beside you. <laughs> Russell Russell looks okay. You strained a vocal cord on that. Yeah, that's that's very uncommon for me, but you can just kind of see that coming. I wonder if we can not only replay that back, but do yeah. it sound full. We need not do that. <laughs> we'll refrain from that. That's down. Staying with Simo Branson, keeping another ball alive on the offensive glass. He, he has. There's two, to my knowledge, Melville High School graduates in the building. One is Branson, and one is head coach Dave Luce down in the end zone. Smart. Got the little hook. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen a lot of him tonight. Remember the injury from last night. He had his shoe off in the game against Lindenwood. Tight dribble for Clay. Drew four defenders. And Griffin goes in hard and scores. That is a big time move for Griffin. It is, but to your point about Clay drawing four defenders, you would think that the cleanup to that would be a little bit, little bit easier, but Griffin had to work hard to get that shot inside. I asked you last night what you know about Chicago basketball. Zion Griffin out of the Windy City off the Clay creation. Belvin, I think that's your new name after you're calling out screens last segment. That was impressive. I, I stand by my call. In fact, his teammates should have been calling that out because Russell did get the worst of that. Well, Simo go plus two since halftime. They led by four into the locker room. And Chris Harris and caught off by Griffin. And then Smart whirls in and Acosta just catches it. And out of bounds, Junior Clay on the baseline. And they won't say that changed possession, so they'll keep seven on the clock. You agree? I do. Uh, Brad Corn's wondering why the shot clock didn't reset. And they don't use a lot of the clock anyway. Seven is ample. Working Play fast on. down this way. The smart goes fast and misses wildly, but a foul. Juan Smart saying, come on. You know, both teams only shot two free throws in the first half. For a game that was as physical and as, as chippy as it was last time they played, that's surprising. Yeah, and that's, that kind of made a note of that when we looked at it. That was from SEMO. We were one or two from the line in the first half. Or check that Tennessee State was. SEMO did not go to the line in the first half. Already we've got two whistles and stoppages to play and a reset of the clock that you were speaking about needed to be in place earlier. Johnson bowls over Acosta, and they say play on, and they got a flop. They don't say play on. I agree. So that's fun. Johnson with a flop celebration. All right, remember that old State Farm Series, you make the call. That wasn't as physical as some others that I've seen. Look at that. Look at that. Johnson's been a beast inside tonight. But anyway, you're talking about insurance commercials. 
Well, the old State Farm commercial used to be, you make the call, primarily in football. And Nate Johnson made the call? He did. He helped toward the end. He sure did. So this is the biggest lead of the night either way. Nine-point jump. There were some huge swings in the regular season games. Tennessee State led by 15 and then lost the first game by 17. 32-point turnarounds in Cape Girardeau. Acosta muscles it back up, and it lifts off. And whose ball is it? It'll be Tennessee State's ball. Not a lot of finesse around the rim then, and Acosta with two point blank opportunities. Also, remember, Southern in the end, they came into Tennessee State and just really kind of blew their doors off a bit in the second half on Saturday. And I don't know if you've seen a little bit of hangover from that, but Tennessee State just doesn't look in sync as we play pretty early here in the second half. Saw three SEMO players there, Bob, with the exact same reaction. Johnson, Smart, and Russell all went hands on head. And drive and kick three, Griffin. Oh, offensive rebound, Brown way up there to get it. And the lid is still on. Acosta gets stuffed. Oh, that is Velcro for Johnson. Again, not for the fate of heart inside tonight, but that is all ball by Johnson. He thought there was a foul whistle on him, when in fact the ball went out of bounds. Right. It was a dead ball. And Clay, front rim. And junior Clay still stuck on 12 points since halftime. Has not scored since the break. Didn't score late in the first half. It's been a long drought for him. Russell, deep one. Oh, you bet. Oh, that's nice. Like Johnson works hard and comes out and sets a screen twice to free him up. He hits the shot. TSU's in danger zone right here. Let's see if they can get Clay free if it's Gerald. Oh, they needed that one. There's the answer. Brad Corn immediately says to his team, hey, it's okay. Just close better and get back to work offensively. Watch the high screen here, Johnson working high. And Russell deferred it, but here it comes again. And Acosta's out to hedge, and Johnson seeking the ball and the rim. Acosta was out to hedge, but he didn't drop back deep against Johnson. And here comes Clay, that is a block on somebody. Either Russell or Branson. How about the patience after Russell and couldn't get free, open up this half, gets a deep one now. From the outside right here. Now Russell will dribble here. Now watch the screen high. And Acosta, he's late coming through the lane. And Johnson with another jam. You know, the emotive big man, Nate Johnson. The thing with him, right, is the good shots only. Dunks, layups, free throws. Now Tennessee State's going big. Griffin out. And Keith in. And McCoy's out there too. And taken away. Russell. One on one with Field and got caught under the rim. And Russell the better hustle back getting this play. It's five on four. He was talking about the call, and Tennessee State converts with Brown. A nice up and under right there, and you thought that break began, that Clay was going to go coast to coast with it. And said Clay makes a nice pass to the interior, and Simon will not play for UT Martin tonight. His season is done, and he was a preseason player of the year in this league. So big blow. Both of those clubs, especially Rayshon Taylor, cannot go tonight. And K.J. Simon opened the first eight minutes of final game for UT Martin, then went down. Not a go tonight. And that's an offensive foul. We got Dylan Branson, who was surprised by the call on that one. Young players, watch how Branson responds to this. He gets the worst of this. He's a little frustrated, but he walks down the floor alongside the official, doesn't say a word. I want young players to... Keep an eye on that. 
And Brown and kicked the feet out, got fouled. And Branson that was hands up a bad again. Run of look. Yeah. Again, he's back in the huddle with his team. Got a raw deal about what 15 seconds apart. Yeah, if that. So he went from two fouls to four fouls. Now Branson is talking about it. And Joey Richardson was the official that Branson was talking to. You know, I see Brown shoot these free throws. Two things that just kind of jumped out at me at this at last dead ball. Simo has eight steals, only three for Tennessee State, and we've seen a couple of those against Junior Clay. 13 assists for Simo, only five so far for Tennessee State. And Simo's gotten Clay from behind a couple of times, running back with him. And on the take, Barnes can't get it, but gets his own. Oh, Williams was ready to go the other way. And an advantage for Simo with Harris getting fouled. Who do you think Harris was decisive? He was going to the rack, and I, I'm afraid the pace of this game is going to slow considerably here. See the near steal by Tennessee State, and Harris goes into what is really a triple team in the interior. And again, keep in mind, these teams can score a lot, have scored a lot, but I'm afraid this game is going to slow down to this. And this is something we didn't see a lot of in the first half. That was free throw opportunities for either team. And Simo didn't go at all in the first half. And Harris corrects on the second. And Simo at 70% as the team in league games. That is seventh out of the 10 OVC teams. And it's not going to get it done in the tournament. You've got to be in mid to upper 70s as a team. And the hands for Barnes. He did not save it, though. I was wondering why the horn, there's no substitution. Now checking in, Brad Korn. <laughs> he was, wasn't quite. He's not out of the coach's box. He's, he's the closest guy to the sticky mat, though. Yeah, Penny Collins has been kind of quiet tonight. And and that's that's not a bounce. bad call against him. You can see him top of the screen. He'll walk into it now. You said Penny Collins has been a little bit quiet tonight? Yeah, he, he has been. I haven't seen him as animated. I just don't feel like it's... I don't feel like there's something just kind of out of sync with him and his team tonight as you watch his club. And I think it might be a little bit of a hangover from what happened Saturday with Southern Indiana at the Gentry Complex. Early got fouled and scored. Power move. Johnson's been having his way, but I can get the rub high and the feed to early. McCoy with the foul. A lot of body there, and that one's called. And all three of them for Josh Early. Don't you feel this Tennessee State team just isn't kind of what we expected and maybe a little bit again of more of what we saw last Saturday? Well, not as sharp as they had been to close the year. I know the last game they lost. There's McCoy missing, but it was a hot finish for the Tigers. They were 7-2 and two in the back half of the OVC. Only losses were to the champs, Moorhead State, and then that final game against Southern Indiana. Down 13. Clay trying to get it going second half. Still hasn't scored since the locker room, and still has not. Oh, what a save. And Russell was slipping along that baseline. And look out here at half court. Brown gets it back. And Tennessee State had numbers there. And again, Clay just very slow to get this offense going. Push off with the left hand there on Harris. Oh, we got a foul on early. On number 21, We'd all be in a five-on-four situation in the front court, but very surprised at the lack of aggressiveness. Check out early here. Oh, yeah. We'll rip that arm. Yep. He was behind McCoy. He got called for his third foul. 
Fitzgerald. Rebound for Barnes. And right down the center of the floor, Russell. He gets fouled. Tennessee State very slow to get down the floor. And Russell just the one-on-one. And so to your point, no free throws in the first half. Opportunities for Simo. And now they're making the most of it here. Getting themselves to the line early this half. First one down for Russell. Now this is going to be their 10th foul shot of this half already. Sitting in the bonus the rest of the way. Both teams will be bonus the rest of the way. So we're going to make up for the lack of free throws in the first half. And the expediency of the first half. Going to slow down here. You just can't, do you just keep wondering if Clay's just going to try and take this thing over himself? Maybe this is a spot. Mm, maybe that's the start. His first points of the second half. You know, it's kind of an unspoken rule. You're talking about baseball analogies that, that Clay has a green light, right? I mean, we just know it. He's just that kind of talent. When did I bring up baseball? Well, it's getting near season. A lot of these schools are playing baseball. And the point is, is that amongst those around here, it's kind of an unwritten rule that Clay's going to be able to go as he pleases with the green light. And I think you're going to get a case of this uh, from Tennessee State here in the next couple of possessions. Kind of get him heated up. So Clay is the Juan Soto. He could be. Of OVC basketball. That's a pretty good analogy there, but he's not hes not on the shot clock. I mean, the pitch clock. But <laughs> There's a shot clock. The shot clock here, the pitch clock and hardball. Percimo really making the most out of these free throw opportunities. Brad Corn's got to like that. He told us this week he expected his team to contend this year. First year. This is his third year now. First year, he felt like they overachieved. They were picked last, ended up making it here. And last year, kind of a bridge year before they could completely contend. And they made the semifinals. And this year, with injuries, the biggest one to Kobe Clark. Haven't been able to get that consistency that they want. And now they're dealing with Clay, who's heating up. Yeah, and it's not a matter of you know, screening high, ball screening. Double screen. It's like to play the ball to see what we can do. And the lead is 13 for Simo. The biggest has been 15. They just had. Russell fall away. Nope. And there comes Fitzgerald slicing through. Russell hustling back all the way. Boyd three. And Boyd tapped his own. Boyd, a little push off. Barnes back into the play. Ball around Fitzgerald. And he rolls in the three. Here comes the run. Think so. I, I do because the first instance of that possession, they had the big numbers and couldn't convert. And then Clay finally come across half court and got into the offense. And Clay is still distributing and being a little selective about when he's going to take this on his own with that green light we talked about. Harris in on McCoy. And Harris to the free throw line. SEMO fans are saying that's justice because they thought McCoy fouled him out wide. Harris gets him inside to the line when we come back. Gum first. Then we're gonna <laughs> thought he was going up the hallway for a moment. Dwayne Wade is one of the only players I can think of that for years played with gum. You want baseball analogies. Was it tops? <laughs> On the packet probably, with cards? Probably, probably not big league chew. Okay, well, there we go. I would guess there's not a lot of big league chew on the bench for so you're Tennessee say, State. So you're saying there's an NIL opportunity there for Dwayne Wade if he comes back, right? <laughs> it's Marquette, right? Is it Marquette? Yes. I think so. Yeah, it was. It was. I think he's double the age of even, even in the COVID era. I think he's done okay absent NIL, too. No, no. Lead is 12 for the Red Hawks. Winner on to the semifinals tomorrow. Morehead State waiting. 
And the scoop for Fitzgerald plus a foul. So personnel changes. First of all, Acosta comes in. He immediately goes high with the screen. He's kind of late getting back as he was defensively earlier, but this could be a beginning as well with a traditional three-pointer. And Bob, this guy is a grinder. Marcus Fitzgerald grinded out 20 points in the final game of the regular season despite 0 for 7 from 3. Here's Harris. All strong take. The Tennessee State tried to come with some pressure. Clay on Harris. And Harris went from midcourt all the way to the rack. Acosta laid a screen. It won't drop. Acosta offensive rebound. Just flung it up there. And Acosta's towering over everybody. And he blocks. That's the correct call there. Big guy. He did, to your point, just slung it up. Didn't get a grip on that first shot. And then shuffled his feet. It came back down. Let's see if Tennessee State can hurry up Simo a bit. Try to create some opportunities. Now Russell, they're just going to pretty much wrap their arms around him high. And Fitzgerald finally had some separation from Russell. And right in his hip, though, as the clock winds down. Russell crosses over, gets free. Oh, he got fouled. Certainly the intended result of your Simo. Did get deep in the clock. And Fitzgerald with an early foul trouble. He's kind of stayed up for that so far. He's got three on the night. So far in the second half, I should say, as far as Fitzgerald goes. He's gone almost 30 minutes of game time without picking up another foul. Penny Collins let Fitzgerald play through two fouls in the first half. Here's Urser. He thought he might be in a little bit more for defense. Instead, they're going to bring him out. All multiple of five for Russell in the stat line. Not anymore. He's got 16. Yeah, Clay and Boyd are having a cross-court discussion with a little wink-wink. So let's see what they come up with offensively. And Boyd's down in the corner. Now opposite of Clay. And Clay drives and keeps it himself. So is he winking to himself? I don't think that's exactly what they intended, but... I don't think Junior Clay's really not seen a shot he didn't like. And Costa upstairs. Now this is where they need to run, and they just can't get it done. <laughs> Unintentional off the heezy. That's not what they were winking about. Not at Threw all. it off his back. Yeah. This so was Clay last time. Well, Costa comes high, tries to set the screen, and Clay on the way to the bucket. Beats three defenders. That's vintage Junior Clay. Yeah, they didn't wink about that. Mm -mm. And they got the first. So, uh, team foul situation. You got Tennessee State with 11 as a team. Obviously, limit is 10. Gets you double bonus. And Simo just got their eighth. So, a couple one and ones coming for the Tigers. In and out. Tennessee State's also got... 11 more shot off that has Simo. That's a bad spot to pick up your dribble for Harris at midcourt. Survived it, though. All right, Johnson and Acosta. Let's keep an eye on that. Russell got help, and Griffin knocks it out of bounds. Did Griffin block that twice I, off the glass? I, I, was gonna, I think he did. I think he blocked it and then got it with the left hand again. There's the duck doink for Junior Clay had 30 points when Tennessee State won. Well, JR, uh, Junior Clay outscored Russell, had 23 points. It's another day at the office for both of those guys. And that's punched out. Hands on the ball for Griffin after his double block. And John St. Clair over to the Scores table seven on the shot clock. No, the the game clock. Well, the game clock and the shot clock started early. 
or maybe ran too much when that ball was inbounded. Okay, so nine in the clock for Sima to get one up. Leading by 10. The winner to the semifinals. Harris looking to isolate. Step back. Oh, big hit, Chris Harris. It wasn't bad defense by Sion Griffin. Just a better shot. And we're talking about Russell and Clay. Don't forget about Harris with 18 points. And Christian Brown, that's a foul on Laquan Smart. Still late in the clock, but Griffin's right there. This couldn't close out. He's a bit frustrated as he comes down the floor, and that's highly understandable. It'll be Christian Brown at the free throw line. A good shooter. The officials are back at the monitor. And John St. Clair and Joey Richardson taking a look. But to your point, exceptional guard play. Russell was 16, Harris 18. Johnson with 12, and over half of his 12 has been pretty high percentage shots, also known as dunks. Man, how many? He hadn't worked, had to work hard for anything, has he? Who's Johnson, that? Johnson? Johnson? Yeah. yeah. He's, he's Our DV good. Sport uh, monitor has gotten a workout today. It has. You began in the 1 o'clock hour today, making sure it worked properly, and now we're. Yeah, we're just doing training late. That's all we're doing. Just making And again, you prevented Teresa from going over there and doing damage to it. Too. <laughs> She's here to protect the technology, Bob. Benny Collins wants this game to get moving. And I think some of the stoppages in play that we've seen in the last four to five clock minutes that really hurt Tennessee State. Christian Brown. Why is that? I thought they were getting a little rhythm and offensively or, or uh, you know, with that combination of Clay and Fitzgerald. And then we've had a, a couple, you know, stoppages right after they had scored to kind of look at something in the line of what we just looked at right now. And just kind of feel like they've – I've always felt all game long they've needed to get in sync and they just haven't looked that way and they've tried to create it here with the defense. But I just felt like it's penalized them. And they do get a turnover. Harris took steps. It is dead ball, though, to your point. Do you want live ball turnover, leak out, jam, something like that to get you going? Whatever it takes at this point, because you're fighting for your tournament life. And you've had some crazy games with this opponent on the floor, so just want to get everything to go in your favor possible. Triple team again. Oh, wow. It's a nice cut for Brown, but no finish. Second try gets fouled. I mean, the triple team on Clay. Effective in that possession. And then Tennessee State able to get another opportunity for Brown. And now Simo. Uh, they've got to be careful that this is not a turning point, Bob. Remember, early went to the bench with three fouls. Their other big. Johnson now to the bench with four fouls. Urcher to come in there and give them some quality minutes here. No hit on either free throw for Christian Brown. And Smart gets fouled by Brown. So a couple seconds wind off, back to the free throw line. And it has been a, a free throw heavy second half. Simo has shot 16 free throws since halftime. After not shooting any in the first half. That's right. So if you ugly the game up, who does that benefit? Are you asking or... Or are you asking I'm, yourself? It's kind of a rhetorical question, actually. I'm asking, and I believe it's Simo, because when it started to get this way with a, somewhat of a foul fest, and they've been able to build upon it. We talk about flipping the opportunities in the first half, 18 here in the second. Costa off a bullet pass and another missed layup. 
he's got to dump that. If he's got the physicality that we know he has and he's that close, he should be just dunking that. Bob, I don't know what's more significant for Tennessee State in this game, the, the misses from three or the misses from close. They're five of 20 from three, but at least five layups that they've smoked. Uh, that's short. And Clay thought he got fouled, but we... We're concerned now about how they're going to trap high. And Russell gets around is down the baseline and hands on it for Griffin out of bounds. Nothing more for Tennessee State. Uh, taking a while for SEMA to start their offense now. 13 on the clock before they can get rolling. For Acosta going to the bench. Certainly a sign of frustration here for Tennessee State because to your point, the short misses and the long misses take your Take your poison, but they both harmed Tennessee State. Oh, early off the back of the rim. Shot that, clock. Yeah, yeah that big Johnson would have gotten that done, right? <laughs> the rebound for Griffin. So uh, early uh, couldn't get it finished. Leaves it at 13. And that's the block. So Clay goes to the free throw line. This one is required for sound on. It might be a big two points when we go to look at it. I mean, it's a mental difference between 13 and 15. It's a, that's a big miss for Simo. I'm with you on the point that you made earlier, though. There really hasn't been that, that big run. There was the 9-0 run in the first half for Penny Collins and Tennessee State, but in the second half, we just haven't really seen a flurry that gets them feeling right over there. Yeah. And again, I, I felt like when they went to the press, kind of token pressure at first. We'll see if they go to it here out of the made free throw. Yeah. They were trying to speed Simo up, and Simo just wouldn't take for it. Plus, Simo's got two outstanding ball handlers in Russell and Harris. Ooh, this is what we're getting at. It's been... You know, make for Tennessee State out there. Next possession, foul, and we're shooting free throws. It just has not been a lot of game flow in the second half. No, there's not. Tennessee State has not scored in nearly three minutes, or no field goals, rather, in, in, yeah, just, in three just minutes. Just free throw line. That's it. And again, as I mentioned a while back, I was afraid this is what this might trend to here in the second half. Well, you know the officials were aware of what happened first game. The 11 technicals happened. As the old saying goes, they have the internet. <laughs> they know. Well, I know the, the 11 technical fouls, that dominates the story of that game, but Simo really struggled to shoot, having a much better outside shooting night tonight. But Russell, oh, it's two at the line. The safe play just goes coast to coast here. And bodied up on Russell. Wants it back, though. And Russell does get called for the foul. I didn't see much there from Russell. He's put the hand check as he tried to prevent Clay from going to the right. Let's see if I'm corrected here. Russell at the top. And Clay does hit the first. So, Bob, we're at 39 fouls called overall in this game. And 54 were called in the slugfest that was in Nashville when they played a couple of weeks ago. Still got 530 left, so he could get that. Doesn't have that same chippy feel, but still plenty of physicality here. Well, that's a great point, but it only takes one play. If you got a player at either end, maybe going up for a breakaway dunk, and you have an intentional foul, somebody, something triggers that where that physicality really amps up Tennessee State's gotten to nine trapping Branson and now Slimo will slow it down I really like that they had an opportunity underneath with Ursher and instead they just decided to 
check it back up, get in the half court. And Fitzgerald right with Smart. Six to go. Crossing over. And that is punched out of there, but a foul. Ooh, Griffin playing up top again. Simo lobbying just to give them the basket on basket interference. Now keep in mind, as you pick this up, you're late in the shot clock. And the block that comes there that Simo argues is goaltending. We're not going to win that one. And back to the free throw line we go. But they will win the they personnel will. piece of that. Marcus Fitzgerald, 14 points a game, fouls out. And they held him to about half of his average tonight. And really disappointing for him. Had those early fouls and had to sit a majority of the first half. And got their sub in. Penny Collins does for Fitzgerald. That's kind of an early DQ with five minutes plus left in the game. It's just not been Fitzgerald's night. A lot of action at the free throw line. Smart makes it 10 again. Looking pretty healthy tonight. Is Smart. So the, the last three minutes of offense, Bob, all free throws. Yep, Tennessee State, no field goals in the last three and a half, and Simo nearly the last three. Hit the five-minute mark. Boyd weaving through. And the ball at the feet of Queth. Get it to this guy. Three Griffin. Short follows his own, slides it underneath for Brown. Hey, field, field goal. goal. Watch the trap here. Simo's got to come to the ball, then they do that. Diagonal pass, get it across half court. When you get in that situation with that trap, you cannot wait for the ball to come to you. You've got to come and meet it. And cleared out for Brown and off a foot. And then six on the clock for Simo. That was off of Tennessee State. And can Tennessee State get a stop here without fouling? That has been the big key. And you put Simo to the line very early in this half. And three to go. Russell, good late in the clock. And didn't get that off. So Tennessee State does get their stop. That's pretty good defense in by Clay. We don't talk a lot about his contributions in, but he knew where they were at the clock. Back to your point about Tennessee State and, and a potential field goal by Simo. Tennessee State needs to put a couple stops back together. I say a couple, probably about four. You need four in a row. Four in a row. Is Clay short and took contacts. No call came. So Tennessee State got their stop, couldn't answer with the score. Simo's been very patient, but there's a live ball turnover. Brown in on Barnes, and he scores it. That's a good timeout there by Pete Collins. That's going to give him a chance to set his defense. Just a little bit of a glimmer. And so those nine points for Brown, he's one of the guys they rely on for digit scoring, so maybe some more work to come for him necessary for Tennessee State. Junior Clay has got the quietest 23 I think I've ever seen and I've been covering him a long time. Doesn't feel like 23, does it? Well, he's giving him seven rebounds too and it's turned over. Griffin intercepts and loses the ball out of bounds. Well, that could have been a big swing then too. Yeah. 50-50 balls. And when you get them, you got to possess them. Press on for Tennessee State. <laughs> Branson was grabbing his hamstring. He still is. You get hit the tailbone? 
rather embarrassing, but I believe that's I believe that's the case. We'll know if he has to go up the hall to the tunnel, right? It's kind of where UT Martin is watching the game down in the tunnel that SEMA will use. By the way, did I mention I saw Trevor Lakes at breakfast this morning? Had a great conversation with him and his family. Great guy, great family. And look, what how'd that go? It was great. He's, Looking he's the, forward to uh, maybe getting a CBI uh, invitation for them. And it was just great to meet him and his family. And he's uh, Indiana's sharpshooter. Bounced from the tournament last night in their first ever trip to the OVCs. And that's short. It's snatched out of there by Griffin. I'm not so sure that's the guy you want shooting three. And Griffin, that won't count. That's down to the ground. And James Six says no basket. Chris Harris does get called for it. That's number four on him. The rebounding advantage is still at the line for Tennessee State. Just Tennessee State. And that's another example there of getting an offensive rebound and trying to create and make and big free throws here Mr. Griffin you got the first that's well, been well, some big scoring swings for Zion Griffin this guy that late January early February kind of defined his season in the three game stretch he had a 19 point 10 rebound game then got shut out then the next game he scores 23 points kind of hard to figure out where he's going to be scoring and you just need a contribution of some sorts from him right here and a foul plus a bucket for johnson now he wanted to dunk that one but instead the double pump and threw it high off the glass Hey, when it's going for you like it is for Johnson in the interior, this is what happens. Look at that. Almost to the top of the backboard and through. Some might say to the moon. That one bounced around earth. <laughs> bounced. All right, time for Clay to take over here. Just an 11-point game. It's really feel like he's going to be the one. Driving kick. Queth. Branson rebound. I'm going to question again why he's shooting a three-pointer. Fair question. Timeout. Oh, 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 Technical foul. They teed him up, right? Go back to the Tennessee State end and address the foul. I don't want to say that's possibly going to end this game, but. That's massive. We're so how either team responds to it. That response right there by Smart is entirely and obviously what you would want to see from Simo in this instance. You know, I think something we kind of take for granted you know, as you watch the game, but there's only two and a half minutes to go, and the margin is 11. And it's never felt like that full charge has come from Tennessee State. We're running out of time to do just that. We See if the press creates it. And Simo very steady through it. A smart runner. No, Johnson kept it alive, but Clay's there. I don't know if that was an alley oop for Johnson to maybe dunk it. Brown short volleyballs. And Harris tips it to himself. Now here's where you want to back it out and run some clock. And as soon as I said, Branson, you do not want to do that. That's what Brad Corn is upset about. You can see him top of your screen. That's a golden opportunity to burn another 20 seconds. Clay got fouled and two at the line with inside two minutes to go. Bad decision then by Simo. Brad Corn is just up and down. He's like, no, he's yeah. still stressed yeah, over there. Yeah, he, he really is. And he walked all the way down to the end of the SEMO bench. SEMO head coach Brad Korn had both hands over his eyes. I mean, that's a classic case of where points are not as important as kind of trimming the clock a little bit. Well, they've been so patient in this half. 
Well, they've got the 76 points. I mean, 21 of those points at the free throw line in the second half. And From, this guy is still in the game at the free throw line for your opponent. In the game for Tennessee State, number 11, so he Justin keeps him close. This is a good three-point shooting team for Tennessee State. They haven't shot it well tonight. And 20%. It's about half of their normal shooting number. With some pressure and some threes. Still got a glimmer here. Getting late with Simo trying to close. See Johnson throw his hands up in the lane when uh, Harris tried to drive and said no. And this is exactly what we do for Simo. And Johnson plus foul. And if you can get a high percentage shot like that. Has Johnson made a bucket outside of six feet of the basket tonight? Yeah, I don't know that he has all season. Uh, yeah, I have to look at that shot chart. You're deep enough in the clock here that this is uh, a great opportunity and one you should take as opposed to the other situation when that was about 25, 30 seconds of clock ago when you really wanted to run some. Another good time in here by Brad Corn. So make sure we know where our assignments are defensively. They may even pressure Tennessee State and force them that problem. Be real competitive when you advance to tomorrow night and so hard for a team to have to play four nights in a row. Only one has done it in the history of this tournament and won it. The last time Simo won this tournament was 2000. They won three games to do it. And underneath Griffin with the layup for Tennessee State. And Harris has been terrific tonight. Goes fast and gets fouled. Even that was a little bit quick. But it was foul bells point, about. It was this point, but the margin is such that almost trade baskets from here on out and still be okay because you're going to have some diminishing clock. I trust Harris more than I trust some other instances where Simo has tried to score when they should have been running clock out. And got that one. And Harris with the big 2-0 tonight. And it sure does. Harris is a guy that just keeps on going double-double tonight. Final three games regular season 20 points 36 points 20 points another 20 piece tonight Coming on strong and he's lived at the free throw line too Too much time we gotta get a shot off Boyd does oh air ball for really good shooter Dedrick Boyd now inside a minute to go and the finger roll goes for junior clay timeout C State TSU. And Tennessee State took a lot of time. That's ultimately got into the hands of the guy. The semis of the championship. Yeah, seems, that's a turn of the century kind of event. So I have to admit I was there for that too. But that's so long removed really from the history of of SEMO. 23 years ago now. I'm trying to make history this week. And that's a travel on Harris. Randy Collins was both coaching his team along the sideline and coaching Harris up too after Harris committed the turnover. <laughs> that's Randy Collins. You can't get offended by that. He, he, he's talking. And, uh, but again, to my point, he's kind of been a little more mellow, a little more withdrawn tonight. And that's the kind of foul you do not want to have because you're committing a foul trying to deny Clay the basket ball, and that's Ursher. And then clock never starts. Jeez, you can't do that and put him in the free throw line for two. That's a huge mistake. And Clay's got a double double tonight, too. 27 and 10. And you think about percentage wise, he's been over 30%. Of their offensive production tonight, but he had that long stretch in the first half. And the game for Tennessee State number two, Christian Powell. This is getting a little too tight for Simo's comfort. Surprised that Tennessee State's going to put some size on Branson, but instead they're going to try and trap out of it, have an extra man on the floor. And Simo gets out of it, and Ursher is fouled. And Brown just fouled out of the game. Well, that seemed like an early whistle on Brown. I mean, 
the intent when you're officiating is, is known, but it's a quick whistle. And again for Tennessee State, number 13, Zul Queth. Queth will return. Think back to the stretch where he shot a couple threes back to back. And Evan Urser. Two lost possessions there for Tennessee State back early second half. Urser, no. I know you've been sitting on an Usher lyric all night. No, I'm, there's so many to choose from. <laughs> Where's your mind go? <laughs> there's Clay underneath. So they trade one free throw for two at the rim. And Harris is wrapped up. This is a six-point game now. Yeah, I was going to say, my mind goes back to this game. <laughs> Boy, this has got to be super uncomfortable. If you're SEMO, but you spent the entire second half, it seems, at the free throw line. You got to do it yet again. So now when it becomes a little bit tighter for a guy like Harris, who's 8 of 10 there, now 9 of 11, it's like, I still need to show leadership. I got to get it done. Now we're going to get Mr. Inside Johnson back in the game. And two and two for Harris. So here comes the pressure to kind of force him a little bit to work harder in the backcourt. And they back off Clay. Clay gives it up. And there's two for Kleth underneath. And now turnover's got to happen for Tennessee State. Back in the hands of Harris. And he will go to the line for the 35th and 36th free throws of the second half for Southeast Missouri State. That is not total. That is just for Simo. 36 free throws they've shot in this half. And keep in mind, it's still a two-possession game. I checked that. It's a three-possession game, but can really well, no, right now, right now, two possession. It is two. Could be three on a make. I got you. I got you, Bob. And again, I was told there would not be math involved, and I introduced it myself. That was a self-inflicted injury there. Don't you work for a bank? I do. It's on the app. <laughs> well, <laughs> don't Everything I need, Connor's on the app. No, don't trust your banker, folks. They don't do math. <laughs> Final half minute. Chris Harris double-double 25 points. Clay can't hit. Snatches his own. And it's fouled. Tennessee State will shoot their 24th. And 25th free throws of this half. So, Bob, I'm going to do some math for you here, all right? Go for it. 36 plus 25, that's 51. That is 51 free throws in the second half. In the half, yeah. You, just, you wonder how the first half could be so dramatically different. Second half, obviously, full of free throws. And this game had a great flow to it. What's a better TV event? Free throw shooting contest or a bunting competition like they do in Japan? The bunting, if you could get... Was you can push bunt, okay. you can sack bunt. Then, then I would say create a area along first or third baseline where you get a specific point total for putting the bunt. No, hard to get creative if you're doing the free. I guess you could go hook shots from the free throw line. That's how you get creative with the free throw shooting contest. Well, underhand. I mean, we can go Rick Barry, too. Yes. There's some opportunities there. How did we get to this point? Oh, I, I asked that a lot with you, Bob. How did 50, we get here? 50 some free throws in a single half. That's how we got there. <laughs> well, with those free throws, Harris is going to keep his career going. And Brad Korn is going to get to the semifinals again. All three years he's been the coach. Simo's played in this tournament. We're going to get a shot at Moorhead State. In the final seconds, Boyd got a three. And Russell can't run away. 
And it's back to a six-point game, but free throw here would ice it. Mr. Dependable to the free throw line. So let's look at the, the box on Harris as he gets ready to shoot free throws. Excuse me, Russell. That's Russell. It's the line of Lynn. 16 points, only 4 13 from the field. 6 of 9 from the free throw line. He's got 7 assists on the night. Don't overlook that. That's a nice number. Good contribution there. Yeah. And that's so, three possession game that puts a fork in this one. Or so. There aren't going to be three more possessions, but I promise that. <laughs> I, I'm in agreement with you, but I just wanted to cause some. I, I'd like to retain concern. our audience, but our audience needs to hang around to watch those guys next. That That is the retainer. Yeah. Watch the guys that score 85 points a game next as Clay adds another. But I can watch Junior Clay play for a long time, too. And his Such season will extend 1.9 more seconds. 32 points for him tonight. SIUE. Emerging from the locker room. We'll see next if Rayshon Taylor, their top scorer and top five scorer in this league, come out of that locker room and plays tonight. Missed the final 10 minutes of last night's win against Southern Indiana. That will be what everybody's saying, Connor, no doubt. He did not come to what was a voluntary shoot around this morning. I'm told that was voluntary. In fact, Brian Baroni has not been into the house until. The bus pulled up an hour or so ago. That's two years in a row that Southeast Missouri State is on to the semifinals of the OVC tournament. This was a grinder in the second half. And they ride 42 free throw attempts to an eight-point win. Now those